Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 283, and it is Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. Say hello and where you're watching from if you're watching us live. And hello to my replay, replay warriors. Welcome, welcome. I am repping my brother's alma mater today, Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. So stay tuned for an update on that. I hope you guys are doing really well. We are going to be creating two projects tonight from the Masterfully Made Suite, which I'm obsessed with. The colors, the designer series paper. Here's the card we're going to be making tonight. And then this is a remix of my large tapered treat box. I added a little handle to it. So we're going to create these two projects live together tonight. And let's see, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? <laughs> Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight. He loves his cameo, don't you think? <laughs> um, if you do have a question tonight, be sure to put a cue in front of that question. That will make sure it gets into my queue. I will save all of your questions for the end of tonight's live stream so I can focus on demonstrating the projects for you. And then we can get to the chit chat and questions at the end. I will stay on until I answer all of your questions tonight. So hello, have you seen Greg yet? <laughs> Checking to see if my brother's in the chat. When you shop with me, you earn pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. To earn pixie perks, you do want to use my current host code, which the easiest way to do that is to use my magic shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code for you, so you don't even have to think about it. Now, if your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code. You can actually, in your shopping cart page, uh, hit the little trash can icon. That will take the shopping the host code off of your order, and then you'll earn stamping rewards on that order, and you'll also earn Pixie Perks on orders of $150 or more with me as well. So I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my brother. This was, I meant to do this last week, you guys, but I was such a, I don't know my, where my brain was last week. Lots going on right now. But my brother Greg graduated from Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. I do feel like a bit of a rebel wearing this. If you're from Ohio, I am an alumni of Miami of Ohio, and there's a big rivalry between Miami and Ohio University. So I felt a little strange that when I checked out at the, <laughs> at the college bookstore, I was like, I feel like a rebel buying this t-shirt. But I could not be more proud of Greg. He graduated with, with honors. Uh, he got a Bachelor of Science in Applied Management, or business administration. Um, but anyways, so, so proud of him. We had a really great weekend in Athens, Ohio. Two weekends ago, lots of fun celebrating. It was fun to sit with my niece and nephew who are five and seven and his beautiful wife, Anne. Well, we celebrated, celebrated, celebrated. And then we had a bunch of family in town. We met for a Mexican lunch. Anyways, just super, super proud. And if I keep talking about it, I'll get emotional. <laughs> so that's my brother for you. The jeans are strong. So I'm going to switch to, let me show you our projects really quickly. And I do have a quick show and tell from Nolan. So here's what we'll be making tonight. And the designer series paper wins the show with these projects. I absolutely love it. I'll show you what that paper looks like. But Nolan has a Lego oops, creation for you as I just knocked the door off. So let me put that back on. Which way does that go? There we go. Um, it looks like some type of kitchen in a jail. <laughs> he didn't actually tell me what his creation was today, but look at all those coffee cups. There's a hot dog and all these little sweet treats. Oh, there's extra hot dogs. I see more there and cupcakes and it's so funny. This looks like a little soda can here. So yeah, this is what Nolan, I almost called him Brian. Man, my brain is fried. <laughs> Um, I am all finished with product shares. We sent out about 200 packages this week. Um, those are in the mail. I did, did the last drop off today. So if you're waiting for that, you should have gotten an email from me with your tracking number so you can keep your eye on it. Um, but woohoo, done just in time for us to go to Norway. So we leave on Saturday and there'll be no live stream next week because we will be cruising through the Norwegian fjords, which actually my nail polish color today is OPI's, uh, uh oh, we can't fjord not to. 
<laughs> something like that. Is that what I told you? Can't fjord not to. No, can't a fjord not to. That's what it is. I totally butchered that. But I thought it was such a cute... Um, this isn't actually the OPI one. My toes are the actual OPI one, but they matched. Anyways, my vacation nails. So masterfully made on pages 102 and 103... It is a stunning suite of products, and the colors are absolutely gorgeous. We've got Lemon Lime Twist, Pretty Peacock, Lost Lagoon, Azure Afternoon, Berry Burst, Fresh Freesia, and I believe there's even more in it. Let me pull up my swatch book here from Brian King. Did I read? Oh yeah, there's even more. So Azure Afternoon, Berry Burst, Crushed Curry, Fresh Freesia, Lemon Lime Twist, Lemon Lolly, Lost Lagoon, Melon Mambo, Night of Navy, Pretty Peacock, Pumpkin Pie, and Sweet Sorbet. All of these images are actually paper. There's cardstock and designer series paper. So I don't know if you can see that. They've actually made three-dimensional flowers with our cardstock. And then they've torn pieces of designer series paper. Uh, I just absolutely love to almost make like a landscape looking pattern. This one is not actual photos of paper, but it is a beautiful pattern. I'm just going to show you those up close. I mean, this this color combination in this paper, there's just something about all of these colors together that I completely fell in love with. In the sweet collection, it's $70.75. You get the stamp and die bundle. I'll show you that up close. Here's the stamp set. Gorgeously made. It's the gorgeously made bundle. Great stamp set. And then the dies, you get five dies. You have kind of the spiral bound notebook paper edge with a little bit of stitching on it as well. This will give you kind of that torn paper edge you can get with cardstock. And then you've got these great um, foliage pieces and then this looks like a piece of washi tape which we'll use on tonight's projects. So that's the bundle. And then you also get the beautiful designer series paper which is a 12 by 12. You get 12 sheets of 12 by 12. It's two each of six double-sided designs. And then we've got the Adhesive backed sequins trio, which I haven't even put in my storage yet. It's been a little chaotic around here, but you get those three colors. It's pretty peacock. Let's see, does it tell us what color? Let's see, adhesive backed sequins trio. Let's go to page 141 so I can tell you the colors. Let's see, pretty peacock, berry burst, and white. Beautiful colors. So there's that. All right. Let's go ahead, we're gonna start with the card today. This is a really quick and easy layout. And to make it even easier, I'm doing a card base that is our thick basic white and it measures 11 inches by four and a quarter. Got that scored in half at five and a half and I'm gonna turn that valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. Then I've got three pieces of the mass. You should. You would think I would remember the name of these papers after doing the paper share, but it's masterfully made. And these three pieces measure five and a quarter by one and a quarter. Okay, so all three are the same. And then let's see. I'm going to go ahead and layer these right on the front of this card. These are great strips because they're going to perfectly fit with an eighth of an inch of uh, the edge and in between the pieces like so, okay? So five and a quarter by one and a quarter, and I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid glue to put those down. This is a great way to use your designer series paper stash. Move these out of the way. I'm gonna kind of start on the one edge, and I'm just eyeballing it to make sure that I've got an eighth of an inch of the white top and on either side. All right, then let's do the one on the opposite side. I find that's the easiest way for me to line these up. There we go. And then that way we can then just center the middle one just in case we were off by just a little bit. And I see there's words on here. So I'm gonna turn that so the words are <laughs> facing the right direction as opposed to being upside down. Didn't notice that before. See them? It's like typed. 
Brian's studying the card. You got it. What's that? I got it right on the sample too. Mm -hmm. Yay. Thanks. There we go. Like that. But you can have fun picking different designer series papers to create this uh, card front. Really easy. Again, five and a quarter by one and a quarter, three strips, and then they'll layer really nicely. I don't know why I just closed the glue. I've die cut from the gorgeously made bundle this beautiful foliage piece from pretty peacock if you wanted to you could use our adhesive sheets on the back of that before you you die cut but of course i didn't think about that before i die cut it so i'm just going to put a couple of dots of liquid adhesive on um, sort of these little intersections i only need enough to just kind of tack it down not tack it down it's actually going to be permanently adhered but i don't need a whole bunch of dots I do like leaving a couple of the leaves um, kind of loose. It gives the card a little bit more texture. If you use the adhesive sheets, then this would be, the whole thing would adhere to the front of the card. But I'm just gonna put that right in the center there and just press. Now, one thing you could do is if you think you have a little too much glue, put your silicone mat down, but I'm just gonna flip it over and then press from the back side. like so okay and then we're just going to put a simple sentiment i'm going to grab a scrap piece of basic white here and we're going to do you're a great friend always hard to read that upside down and backwards or just backwards i guess let's see While we're here, I'm also gonna stamp for the second project, the thank you. We'll run that through the die cutting machine at the same time so we can get it out of the way. There we go, and this is Berry Burst, the ink that I'm using. I'm so happy this color is back. It is a gorgeous color. It makes me not miss Rich Razzleberry at all because this is a much brighter uh, color here. I love, love, love it. All right, so. From the dies, I'm going to grab that washi tape piece, and I think I've got post-it tape on my stamp and cut and emboss machine. So this one we're going to cut right in the middle. I'm centering the sentiment here, and I do like to anchor that with two pieces of post-it tape, like so. My plates are struggling. I'm gonna need you to uh, work your magic with my plates. <laughs> All right, let's see if that one cut out okay. There we go. Love that. Looks like washi tape or a torn piece of paper. And then for the thank you here, I'm going to put the thank you off to the right side. Like so. We're going to put a linen thread bow on there on the left side. Save. I use my post-it tape as many times as I can, so I just kind of stick it wherever I need, wherever I can. I think we're done with die cutting. Yes. Okay. All right. Now the you're a great friend. I'm going to bring that back in, and we're going to do a trio of dimensionals. Oh, that's awesome, Joanne. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna pop that right in the center here. Like that. And then I'm just gonna add a trio of 
the sequins, the adhesive backed sequins trio. I'm gonna do one of each color. Let's see, let's do the pretty peacock here. We'll do the berry burst, although it is a lighter version of berry burst. Let's just pop that down here. And then the white. I'm using the smaller of the sequins here. Just a subtle little bit of bling for that quick and easy card showcasing that beautiful designer series paper. And that die cut is just gorgeous. So you can have fun playing around with different colors here, different patterns, um, lots of fun uh, colors and patterns to choose from in this paper or any designer series paper for that matter. Okay, so that is project number one. Now we're gonna move to, I'm calling it, I've called it historically, this is from July of 2020, and it was a resized version. Many of you had asked me, uh, the original tapered treat box that I demonstrated was a little bit smaller, and you had asked me to make it a little bit bigger. So this is the bigger version of that. Uh, it's got great size for a big handful of Hershey's Kisses or Lindor Truffles, uh, Ferrero Rochers. I've got a Velcro closure on here. You could also do um, a magnetic closure. And the other option you have is if you didn't embellish the front here, you could actually tuck this tab inside. I'm not going to do it because we've got it embellished. But that's another option for closure as well. Now the sort of thumb notch or finger notch is optional. Because of the way that this closes, you can actually open it from the sides if you were to tuck that flap into the box. So you've got lots of options here. And uh, I remember back from 2020, many of you thought this would be a really cute handbag. So that's what I did today. I added a little handle there, which just makes it so cute. So I'm calling it a tapered gift box, but really it's a tapered handbag. <laughs> pocketbook, whatever you'd want to call it. But oh my gosh, that paper on here looks very impressionistic. Uh, but the colors are gorgeous. So let's go ahead and jump into that project. We're going to start with a piece of berry burst cardstock that measures, make sure I can see my measurements here, seven and a half by nine and three quarters. Okay. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored, use your scoring tool of choice here. And along the short side, the seven and a half inch side, I'm going to score this at two and a quarter inches from each side. Okay, so two and a quarter and two and a quarter. Then I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn to the nine and three quarter inch side. And we're going to score this at two and a quarter, four and a half six and three quarters and eight and one quarter. Okay, so two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters, eight and one quarter. Now while I have it here on the long side, I'm also going to make a little tick mark with the ball tip of my stylus at three and three eighths. I'll show you what that looks like up close to the camera right there. Okay, so that's actually identifying the center point of this section. And I need to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just going to flip my cardstock and do the same thing, three and three eighths. So I just want to make sure I can see that. You could use a pencil too. I do like using the tick marks because they kind of disappear. Okay. Now hang on to your stylus or you can use the stylus on the take your pick tool. And what we're doing here is where we made the three and three eighths inch tick mark. I'm going to score diagonally from the tick mark down to this intersection of score lines to create this sort of triangular scoring here. That's going to give us that, um, give, give, that gives us the ability to have this box be tapered. Okay. So I'll bring this back in a second. I'm going to bring out my trusty ruler. And I like to take the ball tip and put it right there on that little tick mark that I made. Actually, let me zoom in here a bit so you can see eh, it might be a little too much there we go all right so ball tip right at the tick mark and then I'm going to score down to that intersection of score lines it looks like so okay and I'm going to just repeat that from that tick mark down 
And same thing on the opposite side here. That was a little bit off, there we go. Like so, okay? So you've got those two kind of triangular sections there. All right, let me put the stylus back. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines, except for those diagonal ones. We'll do those after we've done our cutting because it just makes it easier. All right. Now I'm gonna bring the template in. Kind of turn this. You've got two sections that are narrower here up at the top to line up with the template and then we've got our two diagonal sections here, okay? So I actually like to cut from the back side. It's just easier for me to see the score lines. And with it in this orientation, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines here, stopping at the first horizontal score line. And I'm just gonna cut right up the middle of the score line. Like so, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it 180. We're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna cut up to the one, two, third, first sec, I said one, two, third, first, second, third horizontal score line. So cut all the way up the two vertical score lines, stopping at that third horizontal score line. And again, just right down the middle of your score line. If this is too long of a way to cut, you can always use your paper trimmer for this part. So we've got that. Basically, you're leaving this section uncut. The section that has the diagonal score lines is the one you leave alone. Or you stop just before that. There we go. So we've got it like this, okay? Now we wanna get rid of some of this bulk here. And I like to do this with my paper trimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this section out of the way because I don't wanna cut that one. I just wanna cut these two outside sections here, but I'm gonna line up that folded edge at the half inch mark, which is the second vertical line to the left of the cutting groove. So I like to just kind of line that folded edge there, right there on that second line to the left of the cut, of the cutting groove, and then just, whoops, that's the scoring one, and just cut those pieces off. So you're left behind with these half inch tabs. I'm gonna turn it 180 and do the same thing again. Fold the section you wanna keep out of the way, lining up that folded edge at that second vertical line, and then cut. And you can save those pieces for die cuts or punches for another project, okay? So now our piece is looking like this. Now we wanna come in and miter cut those tab pieces. So again, I like to fold that big section out of the way. Then that allows me to come in here and just do a quick miter cut, which is just a little angled piece that I remove. Just keeps those corners and edges out of our way. Like so. Same thing over here, fold that big section out of the way. Like so, okay. And then what we can do is actually fold backwards on these diagonal score lines. Now that we've cut away those pieces, it makes these much easier to do so. So I'm just gonna fold backwards and score, or burnish, is what I meant to say. But it makes it much easier to do it this way because you've got all your pieces are free here. So those are gonna go backwards. Essentially, how this is gonna go together is these tabs are gonna fold in like so, and the box is gonna close like that. Okay, so that's why you want those score lines to fold in. 
All right, so before I put the template away, I just want to point out at this top edge, we are going to do rounded edges. I think that just gives it a much nicer finish. So grab whatever corner rounder you have in your crafty stash. I'm going to use the retired detailed trio and just round those two corners here like so. I'm going to leave this out because our next step is to go ahead and adhere designer series paper. But this, the piece we put on here, we want to make sure that we round the corners. All right, so I have got four pieces of masterfully made. Two of them measure two and three quarters by one and a quarter. And then two of them measure two and three quarters by two. All of these, if you had a directional paper, are in landscape, okay? So I'm gonna grab this piece, and actually this is top to bottom here, so I'm actually gonna turn it this way because I wanna round. Technically, I'm rounding the bottom two corners because when we close our uh, tapered box here, we need the bottom two corners to be rounded. So just pay attention to the direction of your paper and make sure you're rounding the right corners. Like so, okay? All right, now we can come on in and start to adhere our paper. So I'm gonna have this where the rounded corners are facing me first, because if we're picturing this closing, we wanna make sure that the pattern goes top to bottom here, top to bottom here. So let me grab liquid glue. They're debating on handbook, pocket, or pocketbook, purse, or what else did I call it? Handbag, pocketbook, purse. I've called them all. I've, I don't, my brain is fried. I've said them all, I should say. All right, so the round one goes here, and the next one's gonna go in the middle, or the top here. I think the project that I did in 2020, I gave a little bit different measurements for the designer series paper because I had a 16th of an inch of the cardstock behind it. In this case, we're showing an eighth of an inch. And then this one, we're gonna go the same direction as well. Okay, so the only one we're gonna flip the direction on is the back, and I'll show you that in a second. But just a quick note, this project's gonna go like this. So these three all need to go top to bottom if you had a directional paper. There we go. Ooh, I love this paper. Those colors together are so pretty. It's a pixie purse, that's right. All for the alliteration. All right, so then we're gonna turn it this way or if you wanted to, you could just turn it upside down, okay? Because when we close the box, if you're looking at it from the back, that's the way that that pattern needs to go. So from here, it's gonna look upside down. And I know it's really hard to tell with this paper, but it, the flower petals are kind of going upward, so that would be upside down. All right, there we go. Now we can go ahead and start to glue this together. We're gonna to start one tab at a time. So I'm just gonna come in on one tab here and put liquid glue. And I'm gonna line up this score line here with this cut edge. That's gonna to start to form our box here. Just taking my time lining that up so it's really nice finish. And then I'm just pinching from the inside to adhere that tab on the inside there, okay? And we're just gonna work our way around to the rest of the tabs. You can do them in any order you like. Okay. 
This one's a little bit harder to get your hand in because of the lid here kind of getting in your way. But you can get in there pretty close. And sometimes I can just pinch right there on the score line. It gives me a chance to get that into place. Okay, and then the last one, which is always the most stubborn to get into place. Just gotta fight with your cardstock a little bit. Get that tucked in there. There we go. Kind of get it started. And then you can pinch right there. Ooh, so cute. So when this closes, because of the way that the top is, you get that really cool tapered look. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a Velcro dot for this one. These are my favorites, thin clear fasteners, five eighths of an inch. Um, they're really thin, so you can barely tell that they're there, but they're super strong. If you wanted to save these, you could cut them in half. So I'm gonna pull the backing off of the hook side, which is the one that's more clear. I'm gonna stick that on the back side of our purse flap. And then pull the backing off of the loop side, which is the one that's more opaque. And then here you just wanna take your time. I like to line up right there at that score line first before I, making sure that's lined up left to right, before I press down. like so. Now I do like to carefully open it again. Oops, I need to stick it down a little bit more before I separate. There we go. And then just press those Velcro dots into place so they're good and stuck. And then now you can throw your treats in. I don't actually have treats because I haven't shopped for treats in a long time. Uh, but again, you can fit lots of different things in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and why don't we put our little handle on here, which is totally optional. I've got a strip of berry burst that measures half of an inch by five inches. And I just put little score lines at, half, at half of an inch from each end, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take my bone folder and just curl this cardstock a little bit so we can get kind of that curved handle. And I'm just putting the cardstock between my bone folder and my thumb and gently sort of breaking down the fibers. I'm not being too difficult on it, but just enough to get it to curve. Then I'm gonna fold those pieces back on those little half inch score lines. So it looks a little bit like an inchworm, okay? So liquid glue will start on one end. And then I'm just gonna line that up in the center of our lid here and putting that edge right up to the edge of the lid, get that into place and show you. <sighs> Brian's already handing me a gift card, <laughs> like so, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Now you can decide to make your handle longer or shorter, play around with the lengths here. I thought the five inch length was pretty good. So we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, lining that up right up to the edge, but centering it top to bottom. And I think it looks cute, even though we're going over the designer series paper just a little bit. There's a number of different ways you could put a handle on here. I like the cardstock handle for this one, but you could absolutely loop a ribbon loop underneath the lid, for example. You wouldn't want to put anything too heavy in it because then I think the Velcro might give way if you pulled a, um, the handle too much. But um, so there is that. How cute is that? Cute little mini purse. And then let's go ahead and decorate. We've got our thank you here. I'm going to go ahead and create sort of a double loop linen thread bow here before we stick that down. And I'm just kind of folding this in half I probably have what, about 12 inches total folded in half. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tie right off of here, but just doing a bow, regular bow. And then we can kind of zhuzh our bow after the fact.
pull the tails down and work it. pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to pull the tails down to trim the ends off. Fine, if you pull them down together, then you'll get them to be the same length when you trim them. We've got our little bow there. Okay. Then glue dots, I was laughing because I still have the magnet attached from last week's Q&A. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my take your pick tool and kind of create like a little burrito with my glue dot here kind of folding it over on itself like that. Let's stick it behind the bow there. And then let's see, let's do it like this. The glue dot got a little out of control here. So I'm just taking my fingernails and kind of pinching it underneath the knot. There we go. So there's that. You could add the sequins for this if you'd rather not have the linen bow. Lots of options here. And then I'm just gonna take a trio of dimensionals. Clean up my mess here a little bit. Actually, I see a note. I want to try something really quickly that I think would make this cute. So we're going to go ahead and center that here on the lid. And then let me check something really quick. Just want to make sure it's a current product before I use it. Do, do, do. I'm pretty sure it is. Hold on. Go into the embellishments. It is. Okay. The Rustic Metallic Adhesive Backed Dot. This is a mess, you guys. <laughs> Where are you, are you at? Rustic metallic. Maybe. I don't think those are it. <laughs> Somebody had suggested putting brads. There we go. So here are the rustic metallic adhesive back dots. I'm gonna grab two of them to make it look like brads. On the purse handle. One. And two. I love that. Great suggestion, but again, you could use brads if you wanted to. These are really easy though, because they're adhesive backed. They look like brads, but you don't have to mess with poking a hole and all that good stuff. But there we go with our little tapered treat handbag or a tapered treat purse. <laughs> I'll come up with a name for it. Um, but there we go, using the masterfully made product suite. Let me go ahead and bring in the coordinating card here. I love this designer series paper. The suite is gorgeous, but the paper is what really takes the show here. So there we go. I will have project sheets for these. I know I owe you a project sheet from last week. And actually, I still have project sheets to do from the episode just before dad died. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. I'm hoping to get them posted before we leave for Norway. So stay tuned for that. That'll be on my to-do list for tomorrow. So there we go. Let's go ahead and tee up our Q&A here. Give me one second. All right. Did you take care of Cindy's question yet? Have you had, a ch have you had time to check if you have a box or the biscotti wafers? You got it? Did you post the link in the chat? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. I forgot about that last week, Cindy. I sure will, will, Ramona. Thank you. 17 more episodes till the big 300. Will I be celebrating with a really special project? Um, I don't know yet. I haven't thought that far in advance. Um, it'll be probably a difficult celebration because my dad was here for 200, but we'll do something special. 300 is a big deal, isn't it? 
Ooh, if you could only buy one, the DSP or the stamp pads, um, do you mean like, are you saying pattern paper instead of the ink pads, Donna? I wanna make sure I understand your question. Um, ooh, see, I can't decide between the two because one of the best things about Stampin' Up! is that is their color coordination because you know that the ink pads will match with the designer series paper. So um, can you plead the fifth on a question like that? <laughs> I would not be able to choose. That would be like choosing my favorite kid. <laughs> what is Brian's magic on the plates? Um, let me see if I can explain this right. So you, when the top plate starts to warp, oh, yeah. you flip it and put it to the bottom. Okay, so let me see if I can demonstrate that with my plate. Can you tell that I don't do that? But Brian does when he, I put him to work on die cutting and his plates always look gorgeous. So let me come back to this. All right, so if the top plate, I think mine is leaking oil, I'm looking. So if the mm -hmm. top plate is warped, he would take it and flip it and put it underneath. Is that right? And then I would flip this one. You flip that one too. Because the bottom one's the, the one that gets the most. All right, so let me. Do it from the side. And then they start to straighten out, and as soon as they start bowing, then you... Okay, so if your top one is warped, you flip it, put it underneath, and then you flip this one. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah you need to work some magic on my plates. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yep. I know, hopefully that helps you. Uh, let's see, come back to this. All right. Faith, can I get some magic for my cutting plates also? Cutting plates can be finicky, and also everybody's um, tension on their machines is different. So um, some people have more tension, some people have a little bit less. So just try what works. I've seen a lot of great videos. There are other suggestions besides that as well, as far as um, only using, uh, not cutting on one of the plates at all that you always use the same plate on the bottom. I don't know, I haven't tried that one, but some people stand by that as well. Oh, I see what you're saying, Donna. If you could buy either the DSP or the new in color ink, which would you choose? Um, I would probably choose the new in color ink only because we'll have those for two years and it's a little bit of a longer investment time. Um, if I had to pick between the two, but I am not doing swaps. <laughs> so, um, this is the first vacation that Brian and I have taken since 2019. So we have gotten through the pandemic together with kids at home. So yeah, it is not a working trip for me. So no swaps. <laughs> I'm not, um, I decided that I don't need to make swaps for that. But I will look at people's swaps. They'll be on the display boards on the ship, which will be awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm not doing any work. It's gonna be strictly vacation. So we're looking forward to it. Is the fine tip glue the same as the green glue? It doesn't stick too well. It is a different glue. So the fine tip glue, I believe is the same or very similar, I don't think I've ever had this confirmed before, to crystal effects. So it does work a little bit differently than the green glue does. They all kind of have a different adhesive texture. Um, I do like that the fine tip glue pen, that glue dries, um, excuse me, just like crystal effects. Um, so I do like to use it sometimes if I wanna reinforce embellishments, I'll kind of circle an embellishment with the fine tip glue pen and that kind of keeps it in place. Um, but yeah, it's two different glues. So one's a white glue and one's a cl clear, it looks cloudy, but it dries very, I mean, the white glue dries clear as well, but it's a little bit tackier. Whereas the fine tip glue pen, when it dries, it's not tacky. It's just like the crystal effects. I think it's the same, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I've heard that before. What is the length in inches of the stamp? You're a great friend. I'm wondering if it is the same woodblock one I have from eons ago. It's probably a different one, but, um, cause I don't think Stampin' Up! usually duplicates, but the, you're a great friend. Let me measure the, what's on the block. 
The red rubber is about two and an eighth in length. The sentiment itself is about one and seven eighths. Okay. Your brother shut up with like 10 minutes left. Oh, Greg, you have to go back and watch the replay. I finally did my little shout out to you at the beginning. I'm wearing my Ohio shirt too. <laughs> um, is that how you use the silicone mat? Ha ha, I had no clue. So the silicone mat really is for protecting your work surface from adhesives. Now that could be hot glue gun, that could be the green glue or the multi-purpose glue. We call it the green glue because the bottle's green. Um, even the stamp and seal and the stamp and seal plus that's a great surface to use those on because then they won't uh, you know if they go off the edge of your paper the silicone mat kind of saves it um and then yeah mostly it, the silicone mat is for protecting your work surface from adhesive but it's great for setting up a hot glue gun on there you can just pull that um, dried hot glue off um so yeah i love the silicone craft mat I am using, I just forgot it, Masterfully Made. Always forget the name. It's 102. Yeah. Masterfully Made. It's on page 102 and 103 of the annual catalog. And here's that beautiful paper. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, in the middle of paper shares, I got to see all of the papers and then I started saying, well, I love that one and I love that one and I love that one. The papers are great, this, this annual catalog. Love them a lot. No swaps for the cruise. I think I answered that, right? I did. When using a new cut and emboss machine, do I alternate the cutting plates top and bottom or do I just turn over the plates? So you'll kind of have to, a little bit of trial and error, Laura. Um, Brian has a lot of luck by alternating and flipping them at the same time. Um, pretty much whenever a plate starts to, like if you were to put it flat on a surface and press on the plate, if you're getting any type of give, then the plate is starting to warp. And so then you can either uh, rotate them, swap them, not swap them, rotate, flip, um, just to try to keep them flat. Okay. So I think the big difference is like I do 100 at a time versus like over time. Correct. You're doing like mass cutting. Right. So like I notice it right away and then I'm like, I need to flip them. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear him on the microphone, but he's, he'll cut like a hundred die cuts at a time. So he can tell pretty quickly when the, the um, cutting plate starts to warp and then he does his little flip and swap. <laughs> flip and swap. <laughs> Sounds good. Ooh. They are not Myrtle. It is just a trip for Brian and I and all the rest of the Achievers as well. They're going to hang out with their grandma this week. When I flip my plates, I get an indent into my cardstock from the markings on the plate. How do you avoid that by flipping your plates? So you're not going to be able to avoid that as far as flipping the plates. But one of the things that you can do is use like copy paper or old junk mail to put some type of barrier between the plate and your cardstock. Most of the things that I die cut, um, the markings end up on the back side of the die cut, so they don't bother me as much. But if you're starting to see markings on the front side of your die cuts, try just sandwiching um, a piece of copy paper or we all have like junk mail and stuff like that. Just throw in a scrap piece um, on top, actually, and I would do it um, you can either do it underneath or on top of, but just as a bit of a barrier from the plates to the cardstock so you don't get those markings. Uh, wax paper would work as well, but um, we all have a plethora of junk mail versus wax paper. I did not, Ramona, so we are literally flying in the day the ship embarks. Is that what it's called? The day the ship leaves, debarks, disembarkation, <laughs> I don't know. Please. We land literally the morning that the ship leaves, and then we're jumping on a flight the day the ship returns. So a very quick trip uh, working around Brian's work schedule. So, Besides getting a way to relax, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, the milkshakes? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, really spending time with Brian. I'm looking forward to having just a getaway, just the two of us. It'll be good to see uh, lots of achievers that I haven't seen in many years. The last incentive trip that we went on was in 2019, which was our last vacation, wasn't it? 
when we cruised the uh, Greek Isles. Um, but yeah, it's going to get to see some of my um, stamping friends. Some I've never met in person before, but we're friends over the internet. So I'm excited to hug their necks and see them in person. Spending time with Brian and we do get free milkshakes. Johnny Rockets milkshakes I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> I'm on vacation so I can have a milkshake a day, right? <laughs> oh. I think I would buy the designer series paper because there's probably an ink color close to the called for one. Yes, Donna, that's also a great suggestion. A lot of our colors have sort of color pairings or color buddies where uh, you can um, not get away, but uh, you can use similar colors that you may already have in your stash with our designer series paper. So that's a great option as well. Oh, the fine tip glue does not come off the silicone mat. Interesting, Nancy. Thanks for that. Darling, I have seen a few people use a piercing mat when using poly stamps with blocks. What is that mat? So that is this, and you can see I've used it for piercing. Um, this is a, I want to say it is like six and a half by nine and a half. And it is like just a squishy mat which makes stamping with photopolymer because the photopolymer stamps don't have the foam that the red rubber or the cling stamps have so this gives you that little bit of give and especially with photopolymer stamps that are more have more solid images the stamp and pierce mat is going to give you a much better ink coverage or stamped image now my desk mat that looks like wood grain it's actually a neoprene just like a mouse pad so that already has some give but if you don't have something like that then the stamp and pierce mat is great as well and it's good for giving dimension to flowers and um, it's just a nice little tool and it's not too big um, I love having, I have a few of those in my craft room for sure. All right, we have reached the end of the questions. Let's see. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed this video and or got some tips or tricks, be sure to make sure you give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and hit that ring the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. That helps us out here on YouTube. We will not be live next week because we will be cruising through the Norwegian fjords. Um, I will have my out of office turned on on my email. I will be trying to respond to anything that's urgent next week, but otherwise our response will likely be delayed. I do have internet on the ship, uh, but I just don't know how strong that internet will be, so I will handle things as I'm able to. Just have some patience with me if we don't get, you, get back to you for a little bit. And anything specific to orders, um, anything like that, you can certainly call Stampin' Up! directly during the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. You'll get a faster response from them likely than while we're on vacation for uh, the Norwegian Fjords cruise. So um, I'm excited to tell you about the trip when we come back. So no live stream next week. What is next week would be the 24th. No. So. I think that's right. May 24th. We will not be live on May 24th, but we will be live on May 31st. That's the week of Memorial Day. That will be our next episode, episode 284. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Um, I will keep you posted. I can't wait to tell you about the trip. Thank you so much. And again, product shares are out in the mail as well as Pixie Perks rewards up to a certain date. You should have gotten emails from me for all of those. We wanted to get those out before we headed out for our trip. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Take good care. Talk to you soon. Bye.